All right, everyone, and hello, and this is Shepard here with another guide. Uh, this time with a hunting horn. I guess there are not a lot of guides out there on this. So uh, I've done a lot of research. I can at least tell you all the mechanics. I can tell you a couple good builds. We're going to show off a couple fights. Um, it's going to be in three three parts if this, is, if this goes according to plan. So in the first part should be really spoiler-free, just the new mechanics as well as a general overview of the hunting horn, uh, sort of like how the combat flow works. Then we're going to show a fight that should be about MR4. It's against Astalos. It's going to be with a ice hunting horn uh, from Lunagaron. Should be relatively spoiler-free. And then I do want to show off a set and potentially a fight uh, that is going to have some kind of like later game Maybe spoiler gear, so maybe skip that part after the Astalos fight if this goes according to plan. Or, um, But I'll, I'll put timestamps up here in either case for you to see those. Okay, couple new things with the Hunting Horn. So uh, first off, we'll just show they have a different combo that is on the uh, circle or triangle attack. Um, in my opinion, I feel like the swing combo makes a little bit more sense to use. If you really want to do a crush combo, it's not necessarily that hard to do it anyways. If you just hold forward, you can still do the sort of crush combo anyways. And then it opens up the ability to do this sort of combo here. So if you're fighting something that is particularly weak to raw and you don't have wire bugs up or, or anything else like that, I think this is actually a pretty good combo to use. Uh, they tell you in the description, but you can uh, move it around as well. So you can make your left swing go left. If you hold left, you can make your right swing go right. If you hold right, if I do it properly. All right, very good. So that's there. One thing to note, there are a lot of choices for hunting horns. If you play the attack up song that gives you 10% more attack for your raw power, which is really good, but not necessarily every hunting horn is going to have that. With your switch scrolls, it's, it's worth considering bringing a, a bead on one of them, the bead of resonance. It's not good damage. It does damage. It is not good damage. The reason why the bead is nice it's because every time you play a song, the bead resonates and it gives you attack up. So that is the primary purpose of the bead. The damage is there. It's very likely the monster is going to run out of, way, out of the position of your bead. But you'll get a little damage from it. It's really just for the buff. Next big thing is the ability to do the Silkbind Shockwave. This gives you hyper armor, puts you up in the air, uh, does a hit, and then lets you do a follow-up if you want. And then the biggest thing about this is it gives all of your songs additional shock waves. Now, these are very interesting. Like, really, really, really interesting. So, the raw portion of it ignores hit zones. However, the elemental portion of it respects hit zones, and I could show this to you. So we have a 200 raw poison hunting horn right now. We could put on a 200 raw elemental hunting horn. I think that was doing like, what, 13 damage before? Whether or not attack up was on or not, you'll see immediately 22 damage. So, for the most part, Hunting Horn has been a very raw-focused weapon. At least in high rank, it was very difficult, or at least not necessarily advisable to run a lot of crit on there. Uh, sometimes you'd land a crit on your Earthshaker, and that would feel really nice, or sometimes you'd hit something uh, with another hit. But because, you know, the Perform combo and the other Shockwave combos, you know, so many of your hits were kind of like true damage that scaled off of raw. You never really thought much about element, but 
Silkbind Shockwave now makes it so that when you're picking your hunting horns, especially if you're doing something that's going to have like a lot of hits in a song combo, like you really like doing um, the melodic trio attack, the, the element you have on there is going to really make a big difference in terms of your total overall damage. So that's a consideration. I'm not saying it's everything, but it is a consideration. Uh, to that end, we also have an egg. Now this egg functions like your normal songs in that it's raw damage, does not scale based on hit zone, so it's like true damage. Element doesn't matter. And the way this egg works is you play three songs. So in this case, we could let's say we had a note queued up. We could do, do perform, that, perform, and then it goes off. Now this is with an elemental hunting horn. Again, we've got a lot of things going on now because we have attack up, but it should be the same if we switch it even to a poison one. And so what makes this so good is in a normal hunt, there are normally many occasions where you're able to put an egg down and use that egg in order to get a huge uh, chunk of burst damage. So say you're using sleep weapons on your, your cats and your dogs, you could very easily set up Melodic Tria to refresh all of your songs and an egg and get, you know, normally around 2,000 damage on a sleep. Same thing if they've got a silk bind, they've been silk binded. Uh, you can queue up an egg in time before they'd wake up, especially if you've got a couple songs ready for Melodic Trio. You can do it uh, when they've, you finished a finishing Punisher on them. Normally those downs aren't very long, but you'll be able to put it up there. So that's really the purpose of the egg. You know, in terms of normal combos, it's not really the sort of thing that I normally worry about too much. Uh, outside of keeping up the songs up that I want to keep up, I generally prefer just doing things like perform. Because this gives you iframes on the perform. The other mode can sometimes make it a little bit easier to get more songs off. It's really a matter of preference, as well as like the hit zone of the monster that you're doing anyways, which one you like. I like having the iframes. If you want to use the other melody mode, that's fine as well. If you do, you want to make sure you've got something like Sonic Wave. So the other performance mode, normally you're just getting that one damage, but if your Hunting Horn has Sonic Wave on it, you get a little hit of damage on there. And then using that, you can start getting a little little bonus damages every time you do that. So keep, keep this mode in mind if you've got Sonic Wave. Otherwise, it's pretty much just a matter of preference. Okay, so here's a nice mid sort of MR4 armor set. Uh, Squire Earrings, again, you're going to get this by doing the Fear Rain follower quests. Pyrachnikadaki obviously shows up at some point. Barbania is from doing the backroom deals with this guy here, right around MR4. And then Lecturer Boots, I think, require you to capture... It might actually be a monster just after Astalos. It's around there. I don't want to spoil anyone. But uh, you can use the Barbania uh, legs instead. This one just gives you an extra point of Capture Master. So idea here, I've boosted up my ice a little bit. Uh, we're going to be fighting Astalos. Astalos takes okay ice damage. Uh, otherwise, some of our physical hits will actually be critting. Uh, so let's get started. All right, this is going to be our Astalos hunt. I didn't even realize that this hunting horn also has elemental attack boost. So again, it, it kind of helps out a bit. And, and part of the reason why I like the Lunagron hunting horn so much is for where you get it in the game, because it's got sharpness regeneration, you pretty much never really need to worry about any sharpness skills whatsoever. 
No protective polish, no speed sharpening, really uh, nothing. And I just, I, I really like that. That's, that's like a really nice perk. The raw is not bad on it. The ice is also not bad on it. It's not great, but for a hunting horn, it's actually kind of like, okay. You do have to run a bead. Or at least whenever you think to use it. You know, the only alternative is, like, if you do really, really heavy performance combos on a regular basis, you'll have your Infernal Melody up fairly regularly. Infernal Melody is not just an attack. It also gives you, like, even more boosted attack power as well. It's very nice. Kind of use, I'm using that Shockwave skill a lot to try and Hyper Armor my way through the roars. It's pretty nice. Be able to get out of the way in time. We did. Perfect opportunity to use the egg here. Egg's gonna go off no problem. Also, a good time to use the new combo. The physical hits really do hit really hard. That new skill, by the way, lasts only 30 seconds. So it's the sort of thing that you kind of gotta use fairly regularly if you wanna have it up. You just gotta, like, weave it in. This might actually knock him out of the air. It will almost definitely do it. Yeah. Big damage there. So I don't think, because I don't have any songs queued up, we'll see if I'm gonna able to get this out in time. Just barely, because uh, the, perfor the performance combo there is definitely a lot faster than going for Melodic Trio. The only reason why Melodic Trio is kind of nice to do sometimes is because it refreshes all of your songs. There's another good opportunity for an egg. They're both down, and then exploding it, of course, will get the, the Mitsu active. And because we already have all those songs queued up, we can just immediately do Melodic Trio. Not much to say here, just <laughs> riding the monster. Riding feels a little bit more balanced. Monsters feel like they've got a little bit more life in general. It's still the sort of thing I find myself doing pretty much whenever there's an opportunity. I guess I've just gotten used to it. If I have one complaint about Rise uh, and Sunbreak as a game is I, I feel like it's just too free of damage. I know why it's there, it's there so that any player that wants to be patient enough could eventually just pretty much beat any quest almost purely through rides. I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing. It would take quite a while, but... Some sort of a balancing mechanic. So that does have Speed Eating 3. Not that you need Speed Eating 3 for max potions. Normally I'd be sucking down, like, Gourmet Fish. By the way, I'm still learning this fight, and I have no concept of the hit range on that one attack. So every time he does that, he's going to hit me. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new attack of his, I think. I, I, don't, I don't remember him ever doing that in Generations. So I'm just not used to it. That would have been amazing if I actually got him there with the uh, Silkbind Shockwave out of the air. You can use Infernal Melody out of there. Sometimes it's worth doing. That was my plan. <laughs> it didn't work. It's like the first half of the fight is such a great example on what to do, and we'll just pretend the second half of the fight is a great example on, on what not to do. Hopefully this paralysis lasts long enough for us to get this egg out. Okay, he's attacking like that, so we're almost guaranteed to get it. That should reach. It did. 
Yeah, you can see with the Infernal Melody up, that was over a thousand damage. We did the, the right swing combo there. It was very good. Again, no problem to get this one off because he's already down on the ground. I want to try and get this off before he is fully asleep. And there we go. And then we've already got Melodic Trio up, so this will go off immediately. Now, Infernal Melody only lasts, I think, 30 seconds? It does not last very long. Okay, just aggressively getting an egg out here. Debatable. This is very debatable. Not punished. Never punished. I know he's ready for capture, but I'm actually kind of going for his heavy scales, and the, you get a slightly better chance off of a kill on them over a capture. A perfect opportunity to make an egg. Really, <laughs> really cutting it close there. And you can kind of prep the he egg ahead of time by just doing a couple performs. See him being in the air there. He at least flinched a little bit, but it wasn't enough for a, of a stagger for him to actually fall out. Okay, so a little bit of sloppy on the back half there, but still showing off some interesting mechanics, some sort of interesting ways that you can approach fights, especially when things are in the air. Uh, coming up next is definitely way more of an advanced armor set. It does have uh, some later game spoilers. So again, if you're if you're bouncing out of, of spoilers, check out the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash sdshepherd. Check out the nexus.gg. Okay. All right. I love you. Uh, I, will, I will see you all soon. So um, uh, don't go anywhere or, or goodbye, <laughs> depending on your preference. Okay. So next up is a really intense set. Um, you have to be pretty confident in your ability not to get hit or willing to suck down a lot of healing with this one. But this is 100% going to lead to some of the biggest eggs you've ever seen, uh, barring, I don't know, uh, heroics or, or something else like that. So it combines a couple different pieces. Uh, we do have a Seregios Helm. This gives us Bloodlust, which while the virus is active, we get increased attack. But once the virus goes away, uh, we still get attack with the uh, benefit of coalescence, which is pretty nice. Beyond that, we've got this really interesting skill called Dereliction. Dereliction seems really confusing, and I do not blame you if you're confused. Uh, basically, as you sit in one scroll, uh, curios begin to build up around you. If you switch while you have uh, two or more curios around you, it goes one, two, and three, uh, you'll heal a bunch of that health. If you're in the blue scroll, you get increased attack and stun potency, which is something Hunting Horn 100% absolutely loves. I uh, haven't tried this yet on elemental sets. I imagine it's probably really good on dual blades if you could fit it in or, or something else that's elemental, uh, heavily elemental based, maybe like uh, try to elemental light bow gun. Uh, but as it is, these two things go together very well. Uh... You know, if you find, you, you will eventually end up getting re-virused throughout uh, periods of the fight. And so every time you overcome the virus, it's very convenient because any of this red health that you had 
which is constantly getting sucked down. It gets sucked down very quickly while you're virused, by the way, which is part of why it's so dangerous. Uh, you regain all of that red health. So whenever you overcome the frenzy virus, you get healed. Not only that, this hunting horn, uh, this one's very specific that I'm using here is the Magnum Molo. Uh, it's not the final upgrade. There's another one coming up, but it's, it's good for what we have. It does give us health regen. And then beyond that, I am able to fit uh, speed eating three on here. So that means we want to be eating gourmet fish on the regular. And so between gourmet fish, health regen, and three points of recovery speed, we just about barely lose any life as time goes on. Uh, which, is, which is nice. It, it means, you know, we're at least not murdering ourselves at least that often while uh, we've got like the fe frenzy virus and the curio sucking us down. One other thing, this is kind of unique to the Magnum Allo weapon because it has such a short purple and white gauge. We're able to burn through that very quickly, which means if you have grinder on a talisman, you're able to benefit from grinder. And what grinder does is it increases the value of your sharpness. And because sharpness does affect the song damage that we do, that means between grinder and all these other raw boosts that we're getting, we are going to get some very large eggs. So that was 1163 without Infernal Melody. That means that would have been about a 2,300 damage wake up. Which is pretty good. I mean, at let, let's just... Let's just do Infernal Melody. I'll just, we'll see where our attack is. Oh, so we could hit over 500 status attack with this set. <laughs> Which is a lot. I mean, that's attack seven. Uh, that's dereliction. That's three points of resentment. You could sacrifice some things for less resentment. Um, but I think... I think those those other skills are nice. I do run one point of protective polish here, so we can kind of stay in purple for 30 of the 60 seconds while the grinder's going. And then it could start ticking down again so that once those full 60 seconds are up, we're ready in time to sharpen so that we can get our, um, our grinder up again. And if you want, if you're in a real rush for whatever reason, you want to get that up, uh, we showed this combo before, but forward circle into forward triangle is a pretty good combo that uses a lot of sharpness. In this case, it should also help build up a lot of uh, blast as well, which is kind of nice. I'm not sure it's necessarily the highest damage thing we could do, but it's not, it's not bad damage. For me, I always just always think about how can I keep the songs up? Health regeneration does not last very long. And then obviously when you get a chance, Silkbind Shockwave, even though we're not using Element, it's still extra damage. Those are still hitting for 31. I mean, that's not nothing. But I wouldn't necessarily prioritize it over just attacking. All right, so not picking a super late game quest to do here. Again, I'm... I just want to be pretty sensitive to spoilers. There's too much of YouTube is taken up of like first 24 hour, let's fill up our YouTube thumbnails with stuff that you wouldn't see unless you'd been playing the game for two months. And I don't want to be a part of that. So uh, just enjoy what this set does to Daimyo Hermitar and Sienitar. Uh, gonna wait here. It probably should bring Sonic Bombs, but this is going to be fine, I think. The absolute most amazingly timed Daimyo Hermitar dunk in the history of humanity. And you see we're just doing that one combo to try and use as much of our sharpness as we can so that we're ready to get into purple. Uh, and activate Grinder when we get a chance. It's also just good for specifically hitting his head directly in front of us. I don't think this gate lasts long. I think it only lasts like 45 seconds. So I just waited.
Again, rides. I know we have an option not to trigger them. But it's the same thing as like an Iceborne with like flinch shot and clutch claw. It's like you could not do it, but when you have all this juicy damage just dangling in front of you, it, it's hard not to. Again, a chance to get another egg here. That will hit both of them. Let's see if we see how much it hits for. I missed it. I'm assuming it was a lot. <laughs> it should have been. We were in purple. So that does, that will reduce it a little bit. As soon as we get grinder up though, it's gonna be significant. So literally within just a few combos and one, a little bit of help from Shogun Sienitar, we have, we have finished this Daimyo Hermitar. That's crazy. <laughs> That's so good. Daimyo is our natural enemy. He hits very quickly and uh, he interferes with our healing. He could build up bleed on us. All right, so we got a grinder up. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on just trying to get him like in a trap here just to get for free. Wow, the dock from putting the trap down saved me. And we still got our egg. That was 1,500 damage. So that would have been over 3,000 damage on a sleep. And that was without Infernal Melody. It's just so much damage. It's an unreasonable amount of damage. Yeah, and that's just like on top of everything else as well. So we don't have the virus up right now. I think I hecked this up very badly. I apologize to everyone for all of the mistakes that I make. I go into the wrong scroll. So I've lost my curio buffs. You just pretend that never happened. You, so you actually can see how much damage less I do now that I left um, the blue scroll. We lost basically 25% of our damage for being in orange versus being in blue. In a way, it's a good thing. We can, we can kind of view it as a little bit of a, a learning opportunity as to how powerful that skill is, which is to say it has a somewhat mitigatable draw pack, um, but an absolutely amazing advantage. So I don't know if this is the sort of set that we're going to see everybody run all the time. It does, of course, take a little bit of time before the curios begin to build up. You know, it's a little bit of a ramp up time, but certainly for anything that's long enough for marathon hunts, I could definitely see people on a speed run using it because if you're not getting hit, there's almost no drawback. And the amount of damage you get is just so significant. Fortunately, the weapons seem to be so balanced in the end game that you'll still see some elemental usage. Okay, and so just to go through the set in detail, we've got attack seven. It's the crux of any set that wants to get lots of attack power on there. Shigaro Magala Helm, again, we talked about bloodlust and coalescence and how they interact. Barbania Chest, again, this is through Backroom Deals. I thought it was nice. It has Part Breaker, Counter-Strike, Attack Boost, and just pretty flexible with slots. This is the Gape Gorm? I don't know, whatever the hell his name is. Uh, Arms. Gives us two points to the Dereliction skill. That's, that's like the big part of this set, being able to get that Dereliction up to three. Uh, speed Eating three from the Tacit. Uh, it, this is... It's, it's one of the side quest lines. Um, it just worked out well. You know, if you were better at not getting hit, you could absolutely fit something else in here that might give you more resentment, I think. I, saw something, I think like the Espinos Tacit or something might fit in nice there. Uh, legs again, just full attack here. Again, uh, rounding out with the, uh, whatever, Gape Gorm's legs. We've got three points of attack. Uh, resentment in the last point of dereliction. And then this test, it's not amazing, but it, it lets us take advantage of Grinder. 
Uh, didn't see it pop up that too often in that previous quest, but longer quests, you might see it happen more often. Uh, definitely not a god charm. You can absolutely get something better, or you could just replace it entirely. Maybe you want more survivability. Uh, something like Divine Protection 3 or something might be really nice as well, or, or even finding a way to fit Defense 7. All right, long video. Uh, if you liked it, please like it, leave a comment. Uh, check, out the, uh, check out the Twitch channel. Buy things on the nexus.gg page. That would be awesome. And uh, until next time, this is Shepard saying I love you. I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have a good hunt.